Did you know that 90% of the world's millionaires invest in real estate? Well, I'm Angel with the Academy Presents Real Estate Investing Rocks, and I'm here to help you if you want to go for your piece of that pie. We're following different types of metrics. We're following expertise metrics, which is basically like public relations, online endorsements, speaking engagements, those things. We're kind of, you know, making sure that we're trending in the right direction. We're getting, you know, more offers to speak, more offers to be on podcasts, um, things like that. We're tracking our impact metrics, which is our inbound leads, opportunities like with our CRM, deal flow, like are we getting more deal flow? Are we getting new investors? Are our existing investors staying with us and investing with us on the second time? So we're tracking all of these things. Uh, we're tracking our brand growth, our brand profitability. Um, now it's going to take time. We've only had him for two months, but the data is building. And so it's, in, it's very exciting that we will, you know, in six months, we can look back at these things and see, you know, are we trending in the right direction? Are we growing as quickly as we want to be growing? Do we need to add, you know, where do we need to make improvement? When you're wanting to monetize specific pieces of this right here, the, you know, I'm looking at six different metrics mm -hmm. you've talked about so far. When you're looking at monetizing those pieces, it makes so much sense to be looking at those metrics. And that's yes, absolutely, I would have never even like thought about it like that. Yeah. Yeah. And just to make sure that you're putting out what people want to see, you know, and that your, your brand is, is being, um, shed in a, in a good light. You want to make sure that those things are corrected. And if, if there's something that's not working to, then you need to pivot and change and do what is working. Okay. I think that's about it. And the one thing that I wanted to tell you is we have, so we have two and, and you can do this however you want to do it. At the, the first two weeks we met every day on a virtual like zoom call. It, it wasn't zoom, but it was Google meets, but we would meet every day for just a chit chat. So him and I could talk and he, I could understand what he needed from me and he could understand um, what I needed from him. And then after two weeks, we went to twice a week because he totally understood what I needed him to do. And I just wanted him to do the work. You know, I didn't need, we didn't need to have a conversation anymore. So that was very much quicker than I thought. Um, when you use a company like Rocket Station, they also hold the VA accountable. So we have a, we did have a once a week call with, his name is Jojo from Rocket Station. He's his supervisor. And I would meet with Jojo and he would basically have me give um, a review to, to Jude and find out, is he showing up on time? Is he, is he letting me know when he takes a break? Is he um, getting things, you know, it, meeting our expectations? And that was really nice too, you know, that he is also accountable to someone else. And I know a lot of people say that you don't want that because then if they quit rocket station, if you're a VA, if you train a VA and they quit rocket station, then you lose that VA because you know, you're not work. They're not working directly for you. And I know Neil says that, um, he, once he hires someone full time, he has them remove all other job post postings. And that's one thing rocket station does. If you, if you hire them full time, then they work for you only. So that is nice. I mean, we know we have his full attention and, um, and they ensure that he, that it stays that way. Um, but they do have to be a full-time employee to do that. Now we, we hired him for a two week trial at the beginning and he was not full-time. He was part-time and I'm trying to remember how many weeks, I mean, hours a week. I want to say he worked 20 hours a week, the first two weeks, and he was able to complete a whole month's worth of social media. So, I mean, it's incredible what they can do. And we just call him the machine now because he's put, he's just pumping out. Anytime we have something that we can't get to the other day, George wanted a blog post written about something and he sent it to me and I was not able to get to it. And Jude said, well, I'll take a stab at it. And he wrote a blog off of an article that George had sent and it was pretty dang good. Um, I had to go back and basic, you know, fix some of the grammar stuff that to sound American, but it was pretty good. So who knows? We may, we may be able to give him some content and have him summarize content for us before long. So it will 10 X, if not for me, it's more than 10 X, <laughs> um, my productivity. So, um, and freed me up to do things that I'm better at. And that's, you know, coming up with content, writing content. 
So it's exciting. And I, I encourage everyone to try it, you know, give it a try. And um, I hope that you will try it. Yeah. Angel. Well, honestly, it, to me, cause I'm an economist first. And when I think about it, it's yeah. like, when you think about like comparative advantage, it's, so you got like absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Absolute advantage means I do it better than you. I produce more units in the same amount of time. And like, if you're comparing two goods in both goods, no matter what, but there's always going to be that comparative advantage where you can do something better than me in terms of the other good that I'm producing. Right. And so it, it's kind of like, why am I going to mow my own yard and potentially get hurt when I can hire somebody for less than what I consider my hour to be valued at. Absolutely. Um, and save myself that time to work on something that I'm better suited for. Um, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting yeah, here, I'm I mean, like, okay. It, it was so, game changing for me. And it, it sure was a limiting belief that I had that, that it, it wasn't going to get done right unless I did it myself, because he has totally proved to me that he can do it better than me and much quicker than me. So why am I doing it? <laughs> so, you know, you know, you kept talking about Slack. I am not familiar with Slack. What is that? It's, uh, well, I'm pretty new to it. We've been using it, I guess, three months. We used it about a month before we hired Jude um, and he organized it for us. But so within Slack, it's a, it's a really a team communication. You can, I think, have multiple Slack channels okay. that have like, so you can use, you know, I can use a, a Slack channel for my family and I can use a Slack channel for my business or each business that we have. If you want to do that, um, you invite people to your Slack channel and it's basically a texting app. I mean, kind of, except it organizes everything in channels. So we have a, a channel that if I can remember them all, we have a marketing channel. We have a, um, we have a general channel channel. That's just communication back and forth. We have um, social media channel. We have a promotions channel and we try to, our, keep our communication categorized so that if we need to go back and find something, we're not searching through our phone through text, endless text messages, not knowing is it group message or was it an individual message? It's all there in the Slack channel and we can find those links. So you can also post links to um, websites or really anything. You can put post pictures in there. You can um, videos, you can add video links to Slack channel. So it kind of organizes everything for you. Um, I know it does way more than what I just told you it does, but it's um, it's a great place. Now, one thing that he that you did also that I didn't mention is we wanted to make sure that once we paid him to create this content for us, these posts, the images, and the the copy, that we had all of that stored in a, in, a, in one place, so that if we didn't keep him or he didn't um, stay working for us, that we didn't lose all of that content that we had paid for. Mm -hmm. So he set up a Zapier for every post goes into our marketing or our social media. I think it's our social media, our social media Slack channel. So we have each, every post is in there and he also makes a copy and puts it in our Google drive. So that's something very important to think about, especially if you have a, a VA creating content for you and you're not doing it yourself to, to have a backup of it somewhere so that you're not having to go back through your social channels, especially if you're tracking metrics that we talked about earlier and you want to I'm like scribbling notes. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not just like looking off screen, doing other stuff. I'm like scribbling down these notes because I, this is, so a lot of the times these episodes are like selfish to me because it's something I want to know about. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's, that, we're all learning, right? right? Every day people do too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure that others are way, uh, know way more about this than I do, but this has just been our experience, and it's been a good one, and so I, I'm glad I was able to share it with whoever was able to listen, but, um, you know, and it, maybe it's something I need to write a blog about. <laughs> well, I mean, this is, I mean, yeah, to break, because you hear a lot of people talk about it. Maybe they own a VA company, or they've been doing it forever, and mm -hmm. so when they speak about it, they forget what they learned along the way sometimes. And so they're speaking about it up here where some of us want to know like, wait, what is Slack? What are you talking about? <laughs> and it's, um, it's less intimidating to ask someone that like hasn't been doing it for, you know, three decades and owns a company that um, finds VAs for people. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, no, Slack has been a, a really good thing um, for us to implement. Slack and Asana both. 
Now it took me a lot of time um, the week before we hired Jude to get the sauna set up, you know, all the tasks set up. Um, now Jude has come in and organized it for me in a way that he can use, um, which was amazing that he just knows so much about that tool. I guess that's one that a lot of VAs use. Um, I think there's Trello. Trello is another one that is yeah, similar the Trello, to Trello uh -huh. I, think, I think there's other ones too, but um, Asana is super easy to use. If I can use it, anybody can use it. Um, but it, it just makes it really nice to know exactly what's going on and where things, where deals are in the, um, you know, across the board. So is it, is it being worked? Is it in progress or is it completed? Is it posted? Um, we can see all of that there. And that's another place that each one of the posts are put. So we have them three different places. I don't think we're going to lose any of them. <laughs> He's, um, it's probably a little bit of overkill, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, those valuable assets are retained to elevate. Okay. So do you have, like, I assume it's more so at the beginning, you really have to, I can't think of a better way to say, like spoon feed. Does a VA get to the point where they're more self-led? Like they know what you're looking for and they're able to just kind of like almost predict what you need? I think we'll get there. Um, for now, we were wanting to make sure, because I guess when you're doing um, content for passive investors, you want to make sure that that the content is focused on, like for this is a great example. So in the very beginning, he knew we were a real estate company that, that bought assets and that we syndicated those, um, the purchases. Um, he did some videos that had a lot of residential houses in it because he just didn't know. So, um, you know, and he did some um, quotes that had quotes for um, all real estate investors. It wasn't specific to multifamily. So you do kind of have to guide and direct them in the right direction and let them know, you know, this video looks great, but let's focus it more on, we want to keep it multifamily focused. We want to keep it passive investor focused or active investor focused or whatever your focus is. And, um, you know, so that they understand. And it takes a little bit of time. Now he's starting to find content other places um, that are, are is, that's, that's also targeting our target audience. And he's able to take, for example, um, definitions. So um, what is a syndication or, you know, what is a CRM or what, you know, what is passive income? He, he's able to get, find that information other places and create content that educate the investor about what that is. So uh, without me having to spoon feed those things to him. Um, and I did do that in the, in the beginning, but now he's finding things on his own. And he's also listened to so many videos now and so many podcasts that George has done that he's learned, he's learned it, you know? Um, and, and I think it just takes a little bit of time, but I mean, we're six weeks in, seven weeks in, seven weeks in, and he is pretty much on his own. I mean, he does a great job without very few, very few questions a week. I mean, I, I bet he asks me less than 10 questions a week. Wow. About something. So yeah, so I um I watched a webinar. It was Adam Adams, and he was talking about VAs also, mm -hmm. um, and he talked a little bit about um like how you interact with your VA, mm -hmm. and so he um and I can't remember exactly how it went down, but I thought about myself, and sometimes I'm kind of short and blunt, and I don't think I am, but other people think I am. And they'll be like, well, that's a little abrasive, um, <laughs> and I don't think it is at all. I'm do that but, with you. Um, so like, have you had any like issues where he felt like you were maybe not necessarily being mean, but just being really blunt and you had to like retrace that? Yeah. So, um, there's been a couple of times that there was something that wasn't done exactly right for, or, or wasn't worded correctly or something. And we would correct him and he would apologize for three days about the mistake he made that, you know, because he, they want to please you. Uh, they want to please you. And it wasn't even anything bad. It was like to something we totally didn't tell him, you know, and I can't even remember exactly what I can't give you an example, but you know, yeah, they want to please you. And one thing you do want to do if you have a VA is to praise them often. If they're doing a good job, let them know they're doing a good job because they want to please you so much that they will work overtime 
to get the job done because they love to hear that they're, especially when they're working under another company like Rocket Station, they get bonuses and things based off of their reviews and their performance. So when Rocket Station hears that we are extremely pleased with the work that Jude is doing, he gets bonuses and things. So it's important to, um, you know, pat them on the back when they deserve it, especially in, and, and when they don't, you know, when they've done something incorrect, just correct them and let them know that it's okay. It's something I didn't tell you or whatever, you know, um, not that they're super sensitive or anything like that. It's just, they want to please you so bad that they, you know, they will apologize for three days. <laughs> yeah, when I, I'm just, um, yeah. Sometimes I'm really American <laughs> as far as just being not crass, but just blunt sure. uh, to the point. And I don't know what, um, what the cultural acceptance is, but at the same time to get a VA from the U S is like exponentially more expensive. It is, you know, I think a lot of people say that you will have issues with um, them showing up to work sometimes and from the, the, um, Phil the Philippine VAs um, because of weather and things. We've had one, I think the second week that Jude worked for us, they had a typhoon and he didn't have, he has a generator that at his home that he was able to do um, his work, but he was unable to get on the call with us because it would use all the juice from his, <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. But anyway, so there was one time that we've had that, but he worked the whole entire weekend, the next weekend to make up for the day that he, his internet was down because of a storm. We have had no problem. He, he shows up at eight o'clock. He lets me know when he has a, a bathroom break. He lets me know when he, when he has a coffee break, which is very rare. Um, he just wants me, he wants me to know that if I try to ask him a question or text him that he, he's not at his computer for that five minutes, uh, you know, or taking a 15 minute break or whatever. And so it's, He's been excellent. Uh, we've been very pleased. Yeah, well, I've heard nothing but amazing things about VAs from the Philippines, just the work ethic and the attention to detail. And um, I was talking to a couple of friends yesterday because we're looking at doing a project together. And I was like, hey, I'm a big picture thinker all day long, but yeah. I miss all of the details <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to make the big picture happen. But I've got crazy ideas that, I mean, some of them were like truly amazing, but I don't always stop and think about all the little pieces that it's going to take to get there. And so I usually need someone on my team that is incredibly detail oriented because I'm sure. not. Well, when, <laughs> when uh, George told me he wanted to hire a VA to help me out because he knew I was, I had too much on my plate. He really wanted me raising capital <laughs> and not creating content, not, cre I mean, he wanted me creating content, but not posting the, con you know, taking so much time to post the content. You know, when he told me that I spent about a week, I'm getting everything that I do written down in bullets, you know, and categorized. Um, and it was shocking to see how much of that I was like, I really don't have to do this. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this, but getting it written down like that and put it into a sauna, I actually told him, I, I think I can do this now. You know, I actually think I can do this without a VA because I actually put everything in my brain on paper. And, um, and now I have a standard operating procedure for each one of these things that I'm doing. And, uh, you know, we wanna, <laughs> yeah, we want to get to the point where all of those standard oper operating procedures are videoed. <laughs> so we can take the video, like a screencast or something and send it to the VA and say, now, will you do this for me or hire a new VA to do, you know, the other things that I'm still doing. Oh, well, and so you don't how to do it because there's a video. It'd be like your onboarding video. That would be crazy awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got big, big dreams. And I'm like you, I, I think of all these things that would be awesome to have and value that I could add to elevate. And now we just have to do them. <laughs> but writing everything down that you do in a day or in a week is incredible to see, <laughs> you know, it makes you realize, you know, wonder I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> no wonder I'm not sleeping at night. I've got a lot going on. <laughs> Yeah, that's, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and when so, you can delegate some of those things to someone that does it better than you, why not? Yeah, you so know, you for a very that, affordable price. Yeah. You were saying that you went through a company, um, like rocket, what'd you rocket say? Station. Rocket station is the one. And we use them because Eric had, has a VA, a personal VA that he has through rocket station and had, has had very good, um, results from that. And so that's why we went that direction. We were just wanting someone quick and didn't want to think about it. 
Um, I know there's multiple platforms that you can hire a VA, VA from. Upwork, I think, uh, Fiverr, there's several. Um, we chose Rocket Station. They're actually a VA hiring company. So they're making part of the money. Jude's not making all the money we're paying him, which I hate that, but um, but he's also accountable to them as well as to us. And it's, it seems to work. Um, and we feel like we're getting it, definitely getting enough value for what we're paying. Yeah, well, I, I can't imagine not using a company because finding, I wouldn't even know where to start. I mean. <laughs> yeah, my daughter does wholesaling and she, they, she has five VAs and she did them. She ordered, she ordered them. <laughs> she uh, hired them all through Upwork and d she had to do like a hundred interviews to find five people. We didn't have to do that because we used a company that, so that sourced the VAs that were good for the job that we were wanting and picked the top, their top three or four, I think it was, might've been four. And we interviewed them all within an hour. I think it might've been an hour and a half. And one stood out very quickly and we, you know, hired him. That was probably rare occurrence that it was that easy, but I think rocket station made it easy for us. Yeah. Well, I know like, um, again, in that interview that, or the webinar where Adam was talking, he, I want to say that he narrows them down to like three or four. Yeah. So, and I don't, I know Frank Petalano also has, um, a VA company and, I would assume his is probably similar if Frank is watching and I got that wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think that that's kind of a goal is once they know what, um, what tasks you're looking to cover, they try and weed it out too and um, siphon it down so that you're not interviewing a hundred people. Yeah. Yeah. It helped. I mean, it made, it made the process a lot less of a headache for us. And I feel, I feel like we're getting way more than we're paying for. So it's definitely worth looking into. Yeah. Now sure. that company, um, do you pay for like, do you pay for the services monthly to the company or is it like six months or 12 months or how does that work? I think you can do it multiple ways. Um, I didn't do that part, so I can't answer that directly, but I believe that it's a monthly draw. I could be wrong. It may be weekly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't pay him. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, but I'm just thinking like, it's hard to that. <laughs> I guess my fear would be that you have them for six months and then they're gone. Yeah. That would be so sad. <laughs> well, and that's why I would think that it would be better to go with a company as opposed to go into Fiverr or Upwork or mm -hmm. something that I think would be more of a short-term solution. Well, it might be harder to keep them from being diverse, like doing different jobs for different people. I could be wrong. Um, I think Neil uses Upwork and he requires them to take their name off of all other job postings once they're full time, which I'm sure you can do that too. But I know Rocket Station makes sure of that for us and that's nice. But, um, you know, Jude is 100% focused on what we, you know, want to accomplish. I recommend using a company, whether it's Rocket Station or some of the others. I know there's several different ones that are good. That's just the one that we used. Yeah, that's yeah, that's just awesome. I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm just thinking, what would, man, somebody could edit all these videos. Because <laughs> I'm so yes. not Yeah. But the, uh, the idea of them writing, of a VA writing copy is just, that's awesome too. Because even if you have to go back through and, you know, clean it up, mm -hmm. you still it's like wiping down the plate after the entrees put on it, you know, I mean, like they yeah. do the same thing. Well, and once you've made, like they spell it, there's a couple of words that they spell different, like realize they spell different than like they, instead of a Z, they use a S. Yeah. That Queen's and, English. Or... Yeah. Yeah. And so there's some, you know, I've corrected that a couple of times for him and, um, and I'm sure I've missed some too, but once you correct it for them and I'll let them know, they don't make the mistake twice. I mean, typically, or he hasn't. I mean, it's just incredible. I, I'm just in awe really. <laughs> and I've, and I've actually grown really, you know, fond of him and I enjoy our visits with, you know, I enjoy asking how he, he is and how his family is. And he, you know, he, he really cares and wants to please. And it's very fun. I do have a fun story for all of your Facebook watchers. Uh, I have to tell you this, it's, I'm probably going to embarrass myself, but, um, it was quite, it was quite funny. So, it was probably week three and I was running around 
crazy and got dressed and I sat down to do our weekly call with Jude and it was just me and Jude at that point. No, I, actually, I think, no, it was just me and Jude. It was me and Jude. I flip it up. I, we're, I'm having our conversation and I see that his face is really red and he's distracted, extremely distracted. And I'm confused. I'm like, I was <laughs> kind of trying to figure it out. And I realized that I looked at my picture and I realized that it looked like I didn't have any clothes on because I had a, I had a tank top, I mean, a tube top, <laughs> like a jumpsuit that was not, that didn't have sleeves. And my computer was only showing from here up. Oh, how funny. And, um, and so I adjusted my screen. I didn't say anything. It kind of embarrassed me too. And I kind of adjusted my screen like this and he, um, and then it looked like my romper had like rat, ratted kind of top. It was frayed, whatever, mm -hmm. right here. So it looked like a towel. Oh, no. and, and I said, dude, I promise I have clothes on. See? <laughs> and he got so embarrassed. I mean, for like three different meetings, he was so embarrassed. And he said, I didn't know, Miss Carrie. I just, I just didn't know. <laughs> oh, but that's awesome, though. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, comic relief. But you do want to... <laughs> You, you, you know, when you do these virtual things, you got to pay attention to what's behind you, and, you know. Well, honest, I'll be honest. I usually worry about what's waist up. So half the time when I do videos or I do summits, I'm in pajama bottoms. Yeah. Because yeah. I want to be comfortable because I'm probably sitting cross-legged or I'm moving my legs around or yeah. um, just because when you do these things, you want to be comfortable because if you're yeah. tugging at your clothes or oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. pulling or yucky. Well, I thought that was quite funny. That. I that I, is I, awesome. I, I, I think about that now before I get on a, a Zoom call. <laughs> I make sure that, that I have clothes up from the chest up. <laughs> yeah, so that people can tell that there's something there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I can't. That poor guy. <laughs> I know. It was so sad. George and Eric and John thought it was hilarious. That I, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would, um, yeah, that would be funny. That would be a really funny story to tell years from now. <laughs> I'll probably be telling that on stage someday. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, just I want to thank you for coming on and sure. sharing about your experience. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty won over right now because uh, just just the video part of it would be. Yes, definitely, definitely, you need to to do that. Editing videos is no fun unless you're really good at it, and I'm not. Um, but just my goal is to have 2000 subscribers by the end of summer. And it, I mean, it's going to happen, but how much easier would it be for that to happen? Because I've got somebody that that's what they're good at and they can make it eye catching and they can keep up with the metrics and be like, Hey, people want to see this, not this. Um, yes. Well, and it gives you time to do the engaging. It gives you time to be the voice of your company instead of being the creator of the image. You know, and that's and like the, the, the difference between working your business and working or working on your business and working in your business. Absolutely. So, yep. yeah, there's got yeah. something's got to give. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for having me. I hope I added value and a little bit of, of uh, entertainment with the story. <laughs> but uh, anytime uh, you need someone, we, I'd love to help out. So I, I know that you have some incredible guests on your on your show. So. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. Well, we've got Adding something. Lots of value. <laughs> we've got something special coming up in July. Um, it's me and Peely Rusi and Liz Faircloth. And um, Ooh, wonderful. Keep your ears open and your I eyes open. Absolutely, and I absolutely will. It is definitely coming up. So, <laughs> awesome. thanks, Angel, for having me. Oh, yeah. Thanks, everyone.